Hi there, my name is Aaron Short and welcome to my YouTube channel and today I'm talking about how to set up the JBL PRX1 or the Eon 1 Mark II. So I was just thinking the other day, when I got my PRX1 from JBL, I had a few issues because it uses a different kind of mentality than I'm, than I'm used to. And I've also seen people talk about this online and indeed ask me questions on my channel as well about this. So I thought it'd be great to make a video just telling you how I would set these up. If you're new here, please subscribe and ring the bell. I'll have more videos about these products and other products like this coming real soon. But without further ado, let's begin. Tip number one, install the app on your device. This is the first thing that I would do because the app is so powerful with these speakers and it's really great. It works on iPhone, iPad or Android. So let me show you my phone and I'll show you where you would find this app. Okay, I've done a full factory reset so we can do this together. Go to your app store and search for JBL Pro Connect. There's a bunch of JBL apps, so if you type that, it'll come straight up. That's what it looks like there, JBL Pro Connect, and tap on download. Do make sure your device has Bluetooth turned on as well, because we'll use that to communicate with the speaker. Now press on open, and it opens the app like that. It will ask you for permission to use Bluetooth, so go ahead and press OK if you want it to do that, which I do. And it's as simple as this, it says add speakers, tap on there, and you'll see your speaker pop up. So there's the JBL PRX1. It says connect, I'll tap on there, and it's connecting, and it's connected already, that was really fast. I'll press done down the bottom, and there we go. So the thing is, if that didn't connect, I would advise you to restart your device, restart your Bluetooth settings, maybe reset your network settings on your device. That will clear out any passwords for Wi-Fi networks and things like that. So make sure the device is on the latest operating system as well and do a hard reset as well. Maybe even a factory reset if you have to. I've had no issues with connectivity, but I saw a few people that have. So for me, it's been as simple as that. If you have any further problems, try the things I suggested or contact JBL directly. Okay, so now if I tap on the PRX1, and you can see there's two or three bars there. I've got a good signal, and there are my controls. I can verify this is actually working by scrolling down to the master volume. You see the bottom there? It's kind of highlighted. It says PRX1 minus 100 decibels. If I drag that with my finger while looking at the screen on the actual device to my left at the same time, I'll see that move up and down, and I'll know it's actually connected. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm dragging on it, so I'm looking over there. Yep, I can see the green bar is going up and the green bar is going down. It's moving, it's moving in time with the slider. So that's how I test it's working. Or you can tap on the mute as well. And then you can look over there and I see it's gone red, which means it's muted. So you can use that to verify it's actually working. And then you can go in and use the app and I'll cover that in a future video. So please subscribe and ring the bell to see that in the future. So this is now connected, but here's the thing. Here's the first thing that a lot of people don't realize. It's connected to control. It's not connected to stream, okay? I had a question about this the other week. So what you need to do now is go to the device, go to settings, and turn on Bluetooth audio pairing. Then go to your Bluetooth settings in your phone and pair it there. Let me do that right now. So on the settings page for your Bluetooth on your device, you can see the PRX1 is connected. Again, that's the controls. We need the audio, so I'll go to the unit itself, the actual speaker. I'll press the master menu button in, and then I'll select settings, and then audio pairing, and then we'll come back to the device. So, one second. So I just did that, and now you can see it's popped up, JBL PRX1. So I'll click on there, and that should pair as well. There we go. So now we have two JBL connections. Like I said, the one at the top is for the control, and the one with the I next to it is for the audio. So now if I select an audio track and press play, it will send that audio to the speaker. So finally, as part of this, I did get questions about, well, I still don't hear the audio. Why is that? Well, what you want to do is go down to channel seven. That's because the audio streaming comes through channel seven. So if that's turned down, you will not hear anything. So obviously set the audio of your device nice and loud, maybe at maximum to get the best signal through. Go to channel seven and make sure that's turned up. Otherwise, you're not going to hear anything. Also, another tip for you, if you press the three dots next to channel seven, you can rename it. I would do that for future reference. You can call it Bluetooth audio or something similar. I love that about this app. You can name the tracks. Press done. Now, if a friend of yours is using the device or if you forget where it is, 
if you're in a hurry, whatever, you can quickly look there and think, okay, Bluetooth audio is right there. And then of course you've got your EQ effects and everything else there, which again, I'll cover in another video. So that's how you get sound on the device. The second thing I want to talk about is make sure you have the latest firmware on the device. And you might want to do this actually as soon as you've paired the app for control. So once you've paired the app for control, you can click on more at the bottom right. And it says firmware update. I would definitely do this straight away because the latest firmware is much more stable than the shipping firmware. And at the time you get yours, there may even be a new firmware, which is even better. So definitely go there, tap on the icon on the right, the arrows and mine is up to date, so that's great. So my app is up to date because I just downloaded it, and the firmware on the device is up to date because I just checked it. It's really important that both your app and your firmware on the device are both up to date. That's really important, I can't stress it enough. Okay, the next thing that I wanna speak about is gain staging. For me, this was the biggest problem that I faced. I could not get my head around this. Like I said at the start of the video, I'm used to a conventional mixer. And what that means is you plug in your microphone or your guitar and you select, say, high Z or mic or line level, and then you turn the gain so you get it so it's just under clipping, and then you turn that channel up to unity gain, and then you bring up your master fader. All my devices use that, it's what I'm used to. With this speaker, JBL have gone a different route, and I think it's great actually. I think it's easier, but it really confused me coming from that mentality, that way of thinking. So I really want to explain how I'm using it now. And I'm not saying this is the best way or only way to do this, but it's working for me so much better. It makes so much more sense to me. So here's what I do. I've been plugging in my guitar and setting it to maximum volume or maybe three quarters if I need that extra push for a solo or something. But I'm setting my levels pretty much at maximum on the device going in. In the same way that when I played my phone audio earlier, I want to set the volume to maximum, right? To get the most level into the unit itself. So I'm doing that. And then I'm going down to master. And I'm setting the master at 100%. Now, I wasn't doing this before. What I did before, or 0 dB, before I was setting the input channel, and then I was setting the master. And I felt like I wasn't getting much volume. So what I do now is I take that out of the equation. I put the master at maximum. So I've got the most volume coming from it. Then let's say my guitar is on channel one and I'm plugged in and I've got the level turned right up on the guitar. I will then bring that up while I play very slowly until I get the level that I want. These channels also use automatic switching between line and mic. So what will happen is with some devices, you won't hear anything and you'll think it's not working, but it will work, it has to switch. So for example, you might plug a microphone in turn it up and hear nothing and think, well, what's going on? I've got master at 100% and I've got my channel volume up here, almost 50%. I don't hear anything. Is it broken? No, it's not broken. It's going to switch to mic. And once it switches to mic, it's going to be loud. So like I said, go slowly with this or maybe even set that master volume about 70% and then bring it up at the end, bearing in mind it's going to get loud. But this is how I do it now, all my shows. I put the master on zero there. I, t I have a Guitar plugged in on 100% or like I said earlier, 80% if I need 20% on top of that for a solo. And then I strum it while playing and I slowly bring that channel volume up and then I hear it kick in. And when it kicks in, I'm thinking, okay, that's it. Now, actually kind of zero there and zero on the master, that is kind of an outdoor gig volume. That's really loud for me. So that's fine. And then if I do find it's too loud, I can then use that master to bring it down if I need to, if they say, oh, yeah, can you bring it down? I haven't, got, if I've got every channel running, I haven't got to turn them all down separately, I'll just bring the master volume down. Same way you could actually set that master to, I think, minus five. And that way, if they say, can you turn it up? You can still turn it up a little bit if you need to. But definitely the point of this is keep that master up high. I think with other devices that I use, I'd often keep that down here around 50%. And I'd expect that to be pretty loud set as it is right now. And it will not be loud because it's just not the way the thing is, um, is designed. Again, in my experience, you may find a different way to use this that works for you. And that's great. But I find it works best if I set that master nice and high and then set the input channels. And forget what you know about gain staging and mic and line levels. Just use it. 
the way they're designed, which is actually very simple. Turn it up until it's the right volume and then play the gig. And I think that's actually in the long run, I think I'll prefer that way of thinking. I think it's very clever. OK, so I really hope this video was helpful to you. I think these are great products. I've been using them at my gigs and I'm really enjoying them. But honestly, for the first few weeks, I did have these issues that I've read about online. And I think it's just a new way of thinking. And I think if you try these things that I've told you about today, you'll have really good results. Having said that, please let me know what results you are having and if this works for you in the comments below. I'd love to hear your feedback on what you think about this device as well. And I'd also like to make a full in-depth kind of tutorial on the app and or at least how I use the app in the future as well. So if you'd like to see that, please let me know in the comments below and subscribe and ring the bell. I hope this was useful to you. I hope you're enjoying your JBL speakers and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. So until then, take care and bye-bye.